Sex-linked traits use a non-Mendelian inheritance pattern, and what that means is we have to modify our Punnett square a little bit to be able to figure out the odds of passing on a sex-linked trait. So let me walk you through a problem, uh, how, to, how to solve a sex-linked trait problem. Keep in mind that on a test or a quiz, um, I would be very clear that a gene was a sex-linked gene. Um, because you do have to figure it out in a different way than doing a normal Mendelian gene that we've covered so far. So watch as I walk through this example, and then I will also show you uh, why it's important to know the difference between a sex-linked gene and not a sex-linked gene. So here's our problem. Uh, hemophilia is a blood clotting disorder. It's a disease, uh, and it's a genetic disorder, um, and it happens to be a sex-linked trait. So uh, the information I've given you here in the problem is that a woman who is a carrier of hemophilia wants to have children with a man who carries no alleles for the trait. And what are the odds of this couple having a child with hemophilia? So I'm going to show you how to figure this out. In order to do this, uh, I'll have to set up a modified Punnett square. So the first step looks an awful lot like what we've done so far with Punnett squares. Okay, the setup is still the same. We're going to put boys' genes up here on the top, and we're going to put mom's genes over here on the side. But this time, instead of putting genes, I just made a mistake. Uh, instead of putting genes here and here, now we're going to worry about entire chromosomes because gender is determined by a set of genes on an entire set of chromosomes, your 23rd set of chromosomes. So, if you're following what I'm talking about, the boy here would have an X and a Y chromosome for his 23rd set. So first of all, let's just worry about who's got what chromosomes. The boy has an X and a Y chromosome. The girl has an X and an X for her 23rd set. Now these are entire chromosomes. Each one of these can have thousands of genes on them. The Y chromosome carries entirely different genes than this X chromosome. So while most of the time we'd carry two of every type of chromosome in homologous pairs, Boys don't have a homologous pair for their 23rd set, and that does some interesting things to the genetics, and that's why we have to make this modified Punnett square that shows not just alleles for a gene, but entire chromosomes. If we go back to the information that I gave you in the problem, the woman who is a carrier of the hemophilia gene wants to have children with this guy who does not carry it. So let's look at her first. She's a carrier. It means one of her X chromosomes carries around this hemophilia gene. So I'm just going to put a little H by one of her X chromosomes, showing that she carries it. She doesn't have hemophilia, though, because she can always read this second healthy X chromosome. But she carries around this X chromosome that has some uh, A's and T's and C's and G's on it that uh, spell out how to build a, a protein wrong, a blood clotting protein wrong. And so this child who gets this X chromosome could have hemophilia for a phenotype. So let's do the cross now. I'm going to take, uh, mom could make a, an egg cell that has that X chromosome, in, X chromosome in it, and dad could have, have a sperm cell that has that X chromosome in it, and we could make this child who got two X chromosomes. We know that's a female, and she didn't happen to get one of the X chromosomes that has our hemophilia gene on it, so she'd be a normal, healthy girl. We could also have this cross result from these two people. That would be a normal, healthy boy. He got mom's normal version of the X chromosome. He got dad's Y chromosome, which would make him a boy, and he doesn't have any hemophilia genes. We could also produce this individual. Again, she has two X chromosomes, so she's a girl. One of her X chromosomes is carrying the hemophilia trait, but she's always going to read this normal, healthy X chromosome that she got from her dad, so she won't have hemophilia in her phenotype. And then finally, our last individual here would get one X chromosome from mom, carrying the hemophilia gene, and he'd get a non-homologous Y chromosome from his dad, making him male. He doesn't have a backup X chromosome to read, so he'll be forced to read this X chromosome that has our hemophilia gene on it, and this boy will end up developing hemophilia. 
So again, when we get done with the Punnett square, we have to go back and make sure we answer the question, what are the odds of this couple having a child with hemophilia? Well, when we work out the problem correctly, that's a 1 out of 4 chance. of kids with hemophilia. Uh, and then if we, um, one last thing I wanted to point out, if we did the same problem, but we tried to work it out using the wrong type of Punnett square, so let's say that you missed the, the giant heading that I would have put on the test that told you this was a sex-linked trait, if you tried to work this out like a normal trait, you won't get a one out of four chance. So pay attention here because I want to show you the difference between working it out the correct way, which I just did. This, this is right. This is the way you should work out this problem. When I tell you it's a sex-linked trait, and I'll always tell you in the setup of the problem. If you miss this, though, and you try to set it up like a normal problem, you will get the wrong answer. So watch. Let's say that we try to do this like a normal Mendelian trait. Again, I'd start with drawing our punnett square. And I'll put dad's genes up on top. Um, so we're trying to work this out like a normal problem. So let's say he would be big H, big H, because we'll say that it would be a recessive normal gene that would give you hemophilia. And dad, we said in the problem, um, let's see, a man who carries no alleles for the trait, so he's got both normal versions, not the hemophilia version. Mom would be carrying around, we said she was a carrier, so she'd have big H, and then she'd have one hemophilia version of the gene, which would be little h. Now if we did this cross, we look at all the possible ways their alleles could come together, we'd end up with a situation that looks like this. And we would have this child who's got dominant normal version, dominant normal version, that child would not have hemophilia. This kid, dominant normal version of the gene, dominant normal version of the gene, that kid doesn't have hemophilia. This kid has dominant normal version and the hemophilia gene, but we're saying the hemophilia gene would be recessive. The dominant would cover the recessive, and this kid would only read this allele for the gene and end up with normal phenotype, so he would not have hemophilia. And this kid would have normal phenotype and not have hemophilia. So if we worked it out wrong, if we didn't use a modified sex-linked trait Punnett square, you would end up with a 0 out of 4 chance of kids with hemophilia, and that's not the right answer. The correct answer is one out of four. These people stand a one quarter chance of making children with hemophilia. So I hope that clears it up and you can see the difference between uh, working out a sex-linked trait versus a normal Mendelian gene.